Hello everyone. Welcome to our next tutorial in introductory remote sensing. My name is Sean Levick from the Geospatial Ecology and Remote Sensing Lab. For today's tutorial on image classification, we'll be using the SNAP application, which is the Sentinel application platform produced by the European Space Agency. And it runs on both Windows and Linux and Mac. And for today's exercise, we'll be making use of a high resolution Worldview 2 image. I'm going to open the image here. For those of you taking the course, this is stored in the data folder under Worldview 2, WV2 or Worldview 2. The file we need to open is WV2, and the image was collected on the 5th of. June 2010 and it covers the city of Darwin where we are based. Opening the file in Mac and Linux systems you'll likely see the DIM file extension. That's, um, the, Sentinel, that's the SNAP file format. Uh, if you're opening it on a Windows machine you likely won't see that extension. Just make sure you click this one and not the data folder. Opening up the image it will present itself in our product explorer. Remember that clicking on these little down, these little arrows or in Windows plus boxes allows us to see some metadata, vector bands associated with the image and the bands themselves. And we can see that this Worldview 2 image covers a nice, it's a multi-spectral image covering quite a broad range from the visible to near infrared. We want to have a quick look at it. We right click on the image name, open RGB image window, and for a true color composite, we keep the red band in the red channel, green band in the green channel, blue band in the blue channel. Opening that up, the image will appear on the right hand side here. Remember that this pane here is the navigation pane, and that's useful for zooming in and then by left clicking on this box we can move around and navigate the scene. Spend a bit of time having a look through the whole image. Those of you familiar with Darwin will be able to identify some key features. We have the wharf right down here in the bottom, the waterfront area. This is the main city of Darwin esplanade along the waterfront here with the nice big trees, green grass. We come around here to Cullen Bay and this is a very high resolution, half a meter spatial resolution in the pan chromatic band. And that enables us to see very small scale features such as boats in the harbor here. This is uh, East Point Reserve, Lake Alexander and as we come across here, we see the, the suburbs of Fanny Bay and Parap, Darwin Racecourse. And up in the top right hand corner, we have Darwin Airport. And because of the very high spatial resolution, we can see great detail, even the, the white lines in the airport runways. Let's just have another look in the bottom right hand corner here. This is Charles Darwin nature reserve, some nice mangrove swamp and savanna in the upland areas. So a nice scene for us to work with for today. Now our first step is to decide on some of the broad, broad land cover types that we might want to map. And as a starting point we might start first with a separation between water and land as a primary classification. It would also be good to pull out the built environment, so hard surfaces like buildings, and separate that from green vegetation. And then we have quite a lot of bare soil in the image too. So we'd be looking at initially perhaps four uh, classes in our classification. Just to get a handle on how some of these cover types that we've discussed um, represent themselves. 
Let's go back to our optical tools and pull up the spectrum view. Remember that this is a way of exploring the spectral response curves of different land surfaces. So if I move over the water and I hold my mouse over water, we see the band values, the reflectance values across the spectrum for this Worldview 2 image. And this curve here is very characteristic of water as we have some reflection um, from the visible, from the blue and the green bands especially. As we bring our cursor over land, we see a change in that pattern with much greater reflectance in the near infrared. Moving that over some harder surfaces, these very white buildings, we see a much flatter pattern. So we're seeing changes in the values, but also in the shape of these curves. And this is useful for helping to identify values and features that we can use to distinguish different objects in a classification. Now we covered in class the concept of mapping out the feature space. And to show you how to do that, let's head up to Analysis and choose Scatter Plot. This brings up the window for the scatter plot. And with most of these tools, it gives us some tips on how to use it. So, no scatter plot computed yet. To create a scatter plot, select bands in both combo boxes. The plot will be computed when you click the Refresh View button. That's the button up here. It's grayed out now because we haven't selected any bands. For more information about this plot, hit the Help button at the bottom right. That's down here. Tip to zoom within the chart, draw a rectangle with the mouse or use the context menu. So if we want to create this feature space plot, we'll see that for the image, we have our the right image loaded, the first image in our product explorer. And now we can choose the band. So for classic feature space exploration, we would plot the red band on the x-axis and the near infrared band on the y-axis. This refresh button now becomes active. When we click that, the scatter plot will be computed. What this plot is showing is the relationship between near infrared and red. So these are the reflectance values. And the colors here represent the frequency of occurrence. So when we look here, a lot of the majority of the pixels in this image fall in this space, the bright yellow, that's the, the warmer areas. If you will think back to our lectures and go back to those notes, we call this line here the soil line. And in general, wet soil would occur down here, having low reflectance in near infrared and in red, and bare dry soil would occur somewhere up here or up here, having high reflectance in both red and near infrared. Now, green vegetation, we would expect to find more in this region, that is um, having very high near infrared reflectance, but a low red reflectance. As we reduce our canopy cover, we would move down this line here, and we would probably find that areas like this, sparse woody cover, denser woody cover, and up here, almost complete green, very photosynthetically active cover. So that's the feature space, and we'll come back to it later once we've created smaller regions of interest and see how this feature space changes in different parts of the image. We will access that later by using ROI masks. ROI stands for region of interest. You have a few options here for editing the properties of the chart, saving it as an image, and printing it. Um, if you open up these 
images, you can change the, some of the titles, um, play with the labels, the axes range, and the appearance. You can also change how the background is presented. Okay, so that's the feature space plot. Let's now move on to creating the unsupervised classification.